come to eco terms. In eco terms, we are discussing about the social science or social studies. So today we are going to discuss class eight, chapter six, name of the chapter, understanding criminal justice system. So here we are going to discuss question answer of understanding criminal justice system. So now. I want to check the chapter one by one. So, first question. Here we are going to discuss the first question. First question says that what fundamental rights are granted to an arrested person? So, it is the most important question. So, what fundamental rights are granted to an arrested person? As for Article 22 of the Constitution, so Article 22 of the Constitution and Criminal Law, Article 22 of the Constitution and Criminal Law guarantee to every arrested person the following fundamental rights. First, the right to be informed at the time of arrest of the offence for which the person being arrested. The right to be informed at the time of arrest of the offence for which the person is being arrested. Second, the right to be presented before the magistrate with 24 hours of arrest. So, the, the right to be presented before a magistrate within 24 hours of arrest. Third point, the right not to be ill-treated or tortured during arrest or in custody. The right not to be ill-treated or tortured during arrest or in custody. Fourth point, confession made in police custody cannot be used as evidence against the accused. So, Confession made in police custody cannot be used as evidence against the accused. Fifth point, a boy under 15 years of age and woman cannot be called on police station only for questioning. A boy under 15 years of age and woman cannot be called to the police station only for questioning. So, now we are going to discuss second question. So explain the role of public prosecutor. A criminal offence regarded as a public wrong. A criminal offence regarded as a public wrong is committed not only against the affected victim. The criminal offence is committed not only against the affected victim but against the society as a whole. It is the public prosecutor who represents the interest of the state. So their role begins after the police have conducted the investigation. Police have conducted the investigation and filed the charge sheet on the court. And filed the charge sheet on the court. So they have no role to play in the investigation. So, here public prosecutor don't have any role to play in the investigation. After investigation completed, then police summit charge it in court. After that, public prosecutor work start. The prosecutor must conduct the prosecution on behalf of the state. As an officer of the court, it is the duty to act impartially. It is one of the important points. It is the duty to act impartially, thus enabling the court to decide the case. So, here they have to act impartially. So, now we are going to discuss third question. Briefly mention the role of a judge in the context to the criminal justice system. So the judge conducts the trial impartially. 
What is the duty of the judge? The judge conducts the trial impartially and in a open court. So you know very well, judge trial must be in a open court. So the judge hear all the witnesses and any other evidences presented by the prosecution and the defense. Prosecution is from the state's side and defense from the accused side. So the judge decides whether the accused person is guilty or innocent on the basis of the evidence presented and in accordance with the law. If the accused is convicted, then the judge pronounce the sentence if a person is guilty, if it is found after the evidence, witnesses, then judge pronounce the sentence. He may send the person to jail or impose a fine or both. So depending on what the law prescribes. Okay. Then now we are going to discuss fourth question. How did the judge decide the case in Santi's favor? So here you know about the story of Santi. Okay. So the judge said that the police did not investigate Santi's case in a fair manner. Prosecution failed to prove that Santi was guilty. So this made Santi innocent. The judge showed enough evidence in favor of Santi and finally acquitted her. Now we are going to discuss fifth question. It is one of the most long question answer. Maybe you will get for this three mark or four mark. So mention a few guidelines which were given by DK Basu. DK Basu guidelines are the specific requirement and procedure laid down by the Supreme Court of India for the police and other agencies to follow during the arrest. So this is for the police and for other agencies who are going for the arrest and detention and interrogation of any person. Some of the, these guidelines include first point, the police officer who carry out the arrest or interrogation should wear clear, accurate and visible identification. So the police officer who carry out the arrest or interrogation should wear clear, accurate and visible identification and name tags with their designation. Then we are going to discuss second point. So, a memo of arrest should be prepared at the time of arrest. So, a memo of arrest should be prepared at the time of arrest and should include the time and date of arrest. It should also be attested by at least one witness who could include a family member of the person arrested. The arrest memo should be countersigned by the person arrested. Then come to the third point. The person arrested, detained or being interrogated has a right to inform relative, friends or well -wisher. So the person arrested, detained or being interrogated has a right to inform a relative, friend or well -wisher. Then come to fourth point. When a friend or relative lives, when a friend or relative lives outside the district, then the time, place of arrest and venue of custody must be notified by police within 18 to 12 hours of arrest. Are you getting my point? Then now mention the term of accused. So, accused is a person or a group of people who are changed with or on a trial for crime. So, now they are not guilty and not they are innocent 
we are just trying the case. So they are called the accused. To whom we are suspecting, they are called the accused. Then, now, we are going to discuss what are the role of the police. The police is an important pillar of administration to maintain law and order. The police is an important pillar of administration to maintain law and order, enforcement of law, investigation of crime, detention of criminals, collection of evidence, conviction. So the police is an important pillar of administration to maintain law and order. Enforcement of law, investigation of crime, detention of criminal and collection of evidence and conviction. The police can arrest a person who commits a crime or disturb the peace and order of the society. So the police can arrest a person who commits a crime or disturb the peace and orders of the society. After proper investigation, a charge sheet containing accusation against the offender is submitted in a suitable court. Then the police investigation have to keep in mind the human right. So we already discussed about the decay washroom guideline. So the Supreme Court laid certain guideline that Police must follow at the time of arrest, detention and interrogation. So the police are not allowed to torture or beat or shoot anyone during the investigation. Now we are going to discuss our last question. What do we do when we see someone violating the law? So when we see someone violating the law, we immediately think of informing the police. After a person is arrested, it is a court of law that decides whether the accused person is guilty or not. According to the constitu constitution, every individual charged of crime has to be given a fair term right. So, thank you friends for watching this video. Thank you, thank you very much. Make this world safe for women. Thank you.